Hello everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be covering subunit 5.11, which is the last subunit in unit 5, and it's on the topic of catalysis, which means we're going to be talking about catalysts. So let's get started. So we've actually talked about catalysts before in a previous unit when we talked about reaction mechanisms. We saw some evidence of um, catalysts in that uh, scenario. And so some of today will be review. But let's just remember that the whole purpose of a catalyst is to speed up a reaction. And when I say without being consumed, what I really mean is without being present in the overall balanced reaction. If you'll recall from a previous subunit, when we were looking at reaction mechanisms with multiple elementary steps, a catalyst was something that got canceled out, meaning it was not present in the overall reaction, and it appeared on the reactant side of an elementary step first, and then was produced on the product side in a later elementary step. So just refreshing your memory on that. Um, those of you that have a more biological mindset, um, or maybe you've taken or you will take AP Biology, um, those teachers are typically not going to use the word catalyst. They are more often going to use the term enzyme. But an enzyme is nothing more than a catalyst just in a biological setting. Typically, an enzyme is usually a protein, um, but the point is they are, they are catalysts. They're just catalysts in a specific scenario. A little bit of vocabulary here. If you see the term homogeneous catalyst, that means that whatever the catalyst is, is in the same phase, meaning solid, liquid, gas, aqueous, so if all of your reactants are in the aqueous phase and the catalyst is as well, then that's a homogeneous catalyst. A heterogeneous catalyst is a catalyst that is in a different state of matter than the reacting molecules. Um, perfect example of a heterogeneous catalyst is um, the catalyst platinum, the metal platinum, is used as a catalyst in a certain part of your car. It's called the catalytic converter, and that's found in the tailpipe of your car. So all the reacting molecules present there are in the gaseous phase, but this bar of platinum that is the catalyst is in, a, in the solid phase, so that's a good example of a heterogeneous catalyst. Now, maybe you remember back from Chem 1 that a catalyst causes a reaction to go faster because it produces, it, it creates a new pathway for the original reactants to get to the final products. And if you'll notice on this graph, if the red curve represents the uncatalyzed reaction and the blue curve represents the catalyzed reaction, how does it make the reaction go faster? By lowering the activation energy, which means you're going to, if since there's a lower requirement energy-wise, more, mo more molecules, more collisions are going to have that slightly lower number, and thus the reaction should proceed quicker. However, I just want to call your attention to the fact that the overall change in enthalpy, change in energy, okay, which is essentially this distance from the energy of the reactants to the energy of the products, that is unchanged. Whether I use a catalyst or I don't, the overall change in energy, change in enthalpy does not, is not any different. 
The only thing that a catalyst changes is the activation energy. And a lot of people ask, well, you know, I, I understand that, that a catalyst lowers the activation energy, but how does it do that? I mean, what is this, quote, alternate pathway that a catalyst creates? And, and that can be different things depending on the catalyst. Maybe whatever the molecule is that is the catalyst makes for the formation of a more stable activated complex or transition state. Maybe the catalyst arranges, helps to arrange the molecules in such a way that they will collide more frequently. Maybe the catalyst orients the molecules so that the collisions that they do have are at that appropriate orientation. There's multiple ways that a catalyst can create an alternate pathway. But again, the point is, the main take home message is, is it's gonna lower that activation energy, making more, more collisions having that required amount of energy. So let's look at an example problem here. This would be something in free response. And it says the following mechanisms are proposed for the gas phase decomposition of ozone. A student claims that the rate of the first mechanism is faster than the rate of the second mechanism because the first mechanism has fewer steps. Do you agree or disagree and justify your claim? Okay, so these two reaction mechanisms have different numbers of elementary steps. I want to call your attention to the fact that they have the same overall reaction. So I just want you to pause the video, take a look at it, see if you can find the difference, the key difference between these two, which might make, you know, support or dispute the student's claim. All right, so let's let's take a look at some differences here. You know, if I think about adding these elementary steps together in mechanism one, I can see that there is an intermediate there that pure O is, is an intermediate. All right, let's look over in mechanism two. I see that O is once again an intermediate. So is NO2. But look, that's going to cancel out as well. NO, nitrogen monoxide, that's not an intermediate. That is a catalyst. Remember what we said, a catalyst is, is a reactant in one elementary step first and then shows up later as a product in a subsequent uh, elementary step. So mechanism one does not have a catalyst, whereas mechanism two does. Remember what a catalyst do, they speed up the reaction. So my answer was, I disagree with the student's claim. Mechanism two contains nitrogen monoxide as a catalyst. A catalyst speeds up the reaction by lowering the activation energy, thus mechanism two should be faster. It doesn't have anything to do with how many steps a mechanism has. It's basically just does it have a catalyst or doesn't it? So that's just an example of a type of free response question you could see. So that concludes unit five. All right, and I hope that you've enjoyed our journey uh, learning about chemical kinetics. And I look forward to seeing you next time in our next unit.